The latest Kentucky Gauge controllers boast an impressive program memory that can store and recall up to 32,000 total program steps. Manually programming these steps can be time consuming, so we developed an interface software that we affectionately refer to as DAVE. DAVE is an acronym that stands for Device, Application, and Verification, and it's used to transmit programs to Kentucky Gauge controllers from a PC, effectively allowing you to pre-program your Kentucky Gauge system at the start of the day or even the start of the week rather than having machine operators manually set up programs or cut lists each day. In this video, I'll walk you through getting DAVE set up, and I'll walk you through the simplicity of how to download programs to the controller. The DAVE software package can be downloaded from our website, and I've included a link in the video description below. It's 100% free to any Kentucky Gauge customer. The download is a zip file that includes the DAVE application, the instruction manual, and a programming template. When you get the file downloaded, you'll need to unzip all the files to your preferred location. This can be a local hard drive or even a networked location if you don't have a PC near the equipment. After the files are unzipped, go ahead and launch the DAVE application. You'll immediately get an error the first time you open it, but this is normal and generates a temporary license file in the DAVE folder. You'll want to email this license file to us at info at highmark.net for activation. You can typically expect to receive the license file within 30 minutes or so during normal business hours, but if you email the license after hours, you can expect it first thing the next business day. When you get the activated license, you'll need to save it in your DAVE folder, overwriting the existing license file. Go ahead and connect the controller to your PC using the DAVE cable supplied with your order. Once it's connected, your PC will automatically apply a COM port number to the cable, and we need to find that COM port number for the DAVE configuration file. You can find the COM port number by opening Device Manager. Press the Windows key and R on your keyboard to open the Run dialog. Type devmgmt.msc and press Enter. This will open the Device Manager. In the list of devices, you need to find Ports and expand the list. Some versions of Windows hide ports, and if you don't see it listed, just go up to View and select Show Hidden Devices. You'll see here that I'm using an RS-232 to USB adapter with my DAVE cable, and it's been assigned COM port 3. Once you note the COM port number, you can close Device Manager. Now let's open the DAVE configuration file and adjust the COM port setting. There's a lot of info in the configuration file, but the only one you need to be concerned with for now is COM port. You'll see the default setting is a 1. If your COM port is different than 1, simply change this number to your assigned COM port. Once finished, save it and exit. And that's it for the setup. Now it's time to take a closer look at the programming. The template is very basic to keep programming simple. It's laid out in six columns and we've included several notes to help explain the function of each column. The first column is the axis column and will always be zero unless you have a multi-axis controller. The second column is used to set the program step. You'll wanna keep these in sequential order. The third column is called the demand column, and it's used to tell the Kentucky gauge system where to drive. You'll notice there are no decimal places, and that's because the decimal is added at the controller level. Looking at this first step in the template, it's set to 1000, and will transfer to the controller as 1000, just like you would type it in at the controller. If your controller is set to display inches with three decimal places, it sets the program step as 1.000. If your controller is set to display millimeters with two decimal places, it sets the program step as 10.00. The fourth column is quantity, and it dictates the number of times to repeat the program step and also indicates how many times the remote start output will be sent. Absolute move types can either have a quantity of 0 or 1. Incremental moves can have quantities up to 999. The fifth column is used to set the move type. Using a 0 makes the program step an absolute position, and using a 1 makes it an incremental move. The last column is used for tool outputs. In most link stop and pusher systems, tool outputs will not be used, so this is typically left at 0. But if you have one of our KDP drilling systems with multiple drill heads, for example, you would use the tool output column to select which drill or drills to cycle at this program step. When making new programs, we always recommend just modifying the template to ensure it's formatted correctly, but you can easily adjust the template for your needs. There are only a few required items for the layout. First, the header row must always stay the same. The formatting can change, but you need to have the headers in this order and the names can't change. Second, the program number must always be called out in this order in the first two columns 
and listed before the program steps. And finally, the sheet name must match the sheet name setting in the configuration file. You can change the name in the configuration file, but the sheet name needs to match it. As long as these three requirements are met, you can jazz up the template as much as you see fit. You can even optimize your cut list on the same sheet before transferring over to your program steps. Now that you know the layout of the programs, let's take a look at the user interface and transmitting a program to the controller. Before opening the Dave application, your controller needs to be connected to the PC and powered on. Otherwise, you'll receive an error message stating the controller can't be found. If you see this, just click OK and reconnect your controller before opening up Dave again. The Dave application functions as a communication interface with the controller. Its primary functions are selecting a program from your files and transmitting that program to the controller using these two buttons. In the middle of the window, you'll see a status box that will provide status information and error messages. At the bottom of the window, there's a connection indicator and a maximum program number indicator. You'll see here that my controller is online, which indicates Dave was able to establish a connection with the controller. You'll also see that I have up to 99 programs available. This number is adjustable in your controller parameters and is used to divide the total program memory. The more programs you have, the fewer steps are available in each program. Reducing the maximum number of programs means you can have more steps per program. With the max number of programs set to 99, you can have up to 323 steps per program on the latest controller models. Once you're ready to transmit a program, simply press the Select Program button to open the File Explorer. Navigate to your program, select it, and click Open. Dave automatically scans the spreadsheet for formatting errors. If no errors are found, you'll see a message stating file verification is complete. When you see this message, you can click the Transmit to Kentucky Gauge button to send the program to the controller. You'll see a progress bar at the bottom that shows the total progress of the transmission. Once it's finished, you'll see a success message that lets you know it's complete and the program is now stored on your controller. You can repeat this process as many times as you like for each program needed for the shift or for the week. Once you're finished, you can close Dave and you're ready to run the programs on your controller. And that's all there is to the Dave software. It's simple to install and even simpler to use. I highly recommend downloading the new instruction manual, which I've linked in the video description. It includes a lot more information and has a new tips and tricks section that can make writing and running your programs more efficient. As always, if you need additional support, please don't hesitate to contact our tech support team by phone at 270-228. 2817 or by email at info at highmark.net.